Hello, today I'm going to introduce a paper named Fast End-to-End -end Learning on Portent Services. This paper tries to solve a problem in the structure biology. So recently, deep learning has been used in this area in order to solve some uh, difficult problem. For example, it tries to analyze the interacting surfaces between two proteins so as to identify the binding site. As we know, uh, currently some biological drugs need to bind with specific proteins. Uh, so uh, if we can just use the deep learning to identify the binding site between the drugs and the proteins, it might help to develop new drugs. Uh, so this work is an improvement of the prior work called the molecular surface interaction fingerprinting. So in the prior work, it has reliance on the pre-committed meshes and handcraft features, which is very time consuming and dirty. Also, it needs a significant computation time and memory. Uh, so it is not practical in the uh, real world application. Also, uh, this work tries to solve this problem by uh, directly computing the features from the input data. So it is free of any pre-compute features. Also, uh, the, pre -com the computation is performed on the fly because it's, uh, it's very fast. And also it doesn't need a, uh, a large amount of memory. So here the problems are the uh, interaction predictions and the binding side application. For the first problem, it takes the two surface, uh, two surface of the proteins and uh, predict whether the surface are likely to bind with each other. And in the second problem, it tries to classify the surface of the protein into the interaction sites and the non-interaction sites. So here, uh, here is the input data. So we have a cloud of atoms and each atom has their uh, chemical types. There are six types of atoms and the type is encoded in a one hot vector. The first step would be sampling the surface point and their norms. So here they define a smooth state function. Uh, so th uh, this function gives a level size surfaces. Uh, so if we carefully select a level, we can get a description of the protein surface. So, uh, so in the next step, we, we just uh, sample, uh, randomly sample the points in the space and use a gradient descent to minimize the uh, the distance between the surface point and a specific level uh, level surface. And in the next step, uh, we clean the points inside of the portions by compute the SDF value of each of the points. And then uh, it divides the uh, it divides the space into several cubic bins and keep only one surface point inside of each of the cells. Finally, after we got all the surface points, we can just uh, compute their norms based on the gradient of the SDF. Uh, after we uh, sample the surface point, uh, we can compute the chemical features for each of the points. So uh, firstly, we will find 16 nearest atom centers uh, for each surface point XI and put the type as well as the inverse distance between the surface point and the atom center uh, to MLP. And the output of the MLP will be summed over and applied to a second MLP. So this MLP will give a uh, 16 chemical, a uh, 60 chemical feature. And this 60 chemical feature will be concatenated to a 10 dimensional curvature. And uh, uh, so as to get a full feature vector of size 16. Then uh, we apply a quasi geodesic convolution for each of the surface points. So here it defines a geodesic distance and use such kind of uh, geodesic distance to build a smooth Gaussian window. And uh, the, uh, the uh, smooth Gaussian window will be used in a geodesic convolution. So here uh, we sample the, uh, the surface point xj in the neighborhood of the xi and compute the convolution between each pair of xi and xj. And the filter would be a uh, a simple uh, MLP, which is uh, either a one layer MLP or three layer MLP. And the input of MLP will be the uh, two 3D vectors. Each will be computed in the local coordinates of the XI. And the convolution will be summed over together uh, to give a final output of the feature vector. So now we've got the feature vector for each of the point XI. And this feature vector will be used to solve the two problems. 
So for the binding side amplification problem, uh, we firstly apply an MLP to the output of a convolution, and then we can get the uh, the, out, the binary output, uh, which uh, which says whether the point is site or non site And for the interaction prediction, uh, it just uh, compute the dot production a product between the uh, between the future vector of both proteins and use it as the interaction scores between the pairs of points. Finally, we've got the uh, result of the experiment. So this chart shows the precomputation time of both prior work and this work. So uh, we can say that this work is three orders of magnitude faster than the prior work, which makes it possible to uh, perform on the fly. And uh, here's an interesting ablation study. Uh, as we know, the, uh, the, uh, the future vector is concatenation of both curvatures and uh, chemical features. So if we only use the chemical features as the input, the result is quite close to the result of the uh, full, full feature vector. However, if we only use the curvatures as the input, uh, the result is quite far from, from that one. So uh, this shows that both the curvature features and the chemical features are important in the prediction. However, the curvature uh, doesn't seem to have a great influence on the final performance. And here, uh, here is the result of the experiment on both problems. And the, the, uh, the solid curve shows the results of the uh, set identification. So uh, as we can see here, that this work uh, obviously outperforms the prior work. But for the, uh, for the other experiment, which is the uh, interaction prediction uh, showed in the dashed curve, uh, this work uh, is very close to the prior work. Uh, however, it's not a problem here since uh, this work is uh, mainly focused on reducing the computation time. So finally, I compute the uh, computation time, uh, I mean the uh, inference time, and also uh, their performance on the side identification problem. And as we can see here, if, the, uh, if they use a three-layer MLP, it will outperform uh, any, other, any other models uh, in, in this figure. However, if they use the one layer MLP, it is uh, similar or even worse than the prior one. So uh, here we need to do a balance between the performance and the computation time. And for the memory usage, uh, it is uh, kind of uh, similar, but uh, uh, it, it doesn't change when, when they use, even if they use a three layer MLP or one layer MLP. So now it might be a better choice to just use the three layer MLP uh, together with the 15 angstrom patch size. Uh, finally, here are the limitations of this work. So as we have showed in the, uh, in the result, uh, the concatenation of the curvatures doesn't seem to significantly improve the performance. So this will cause a waste of memory. Uh, however, if they can change their model and take full advantage of these curvature features, it might help with, uh, to improve the performance. And secondly, uh, although the uh, Although the features of the uh, although the chemical features are computed based on the atoms inside the proteins, the next step, which is the two uh, D geodesic convolution, totally ignores the three D information. So this might cause the loss of the binding uh, information. That's all. Thanks for listening.